Hey y'all, Joseph Lipper here, and today we're going to do a strategy guide looking at some competitions and teams who have really executed strategies really well on how do you, if this is like your first or second year, you're kind of a newer team, trying to figure out how, how the competitions work, what kind of strategies we should be using. We're going to take a look at some of the best strategies that have been used and what exactly makes them work so well. So let's get started. Now, this video is not how to win competitions in some of the most competitive regions in the world. This is not how to win a state championship or a signature event. This is if you're kind of a newer team looking to get started with strategy and maybe there's one or two teams that often will dominate your competitions, but they might not be like world-class teams. How can you do everything you can to make sure that you're playing at your best? Now, the first and most important thing is drive practice. If you don't practice driving, you are not going to be good at the competition. At the competition is not the time to figure out your driver controls. I see this happen all the time where a team with a much better robot will get beaten by teams who don't have nearly as well tuned in robots just because the teams who don't have as good robots are much, much better at driving their robot. They know the robot a whole lot better and they can drive it to score a lot more points. Meet with any local teams, school teams, anyone you can find to help drive practice with you. If you have an extra robot, practice defense. Um, Practicing with more robots on the field is way, way better than practicing just by yourself. But if worse comes to worse, it's better to practice by yourself than not at all. Practice, scoring, de-scoring. Spending two hours drive practicing right before a competition is way, way better than spending two hours trying to make your robot just a little bit better. Now, if your robot is completely broken, yeah, fix it, but then back to drive practice. Making sure you get a good amount of drive practice in. Um, I will always practice for at least four to six hours uh, on the day before the competition. Um, I would recommend that as a very minimum. Definitely, ideally, get way more than that. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some more specific tips that you can use during the match. First, if you're looking for blocks on the field, you're going to want to look around the outside of the field. They like to roll to the perimeter of the field. That's where they'll be. Usually it's a good idea to pick up three or four, keep them in your robot uh, in case you need to score. What you shouldn't be doing is using the match loaders. Usually the match loaders usually takes a lot longer in driver control. It's a little bit hard to use, a little bit hard to line up, especially when other robots are crashing into you. Now, I know sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to see the whole field and make sure you don't miss any of those D-score opportunities that are so important. And that's where a drive coach comes in. Have someone standing next to the driver during the match that will point out all these opportunities to them. Be like, hey, there's a whole bunch of blocks over there that you should go D-score. Um, it's super easy as the driver to get tunnel visioned in and just be focused on the robot and not really see all the other stuff going on on the field. So that's what your drive coach is for. Now, the next point is defense. And defense is super important, especially against good teams. Often teams are really, really good because the robot's really, really good at scoring. But if you can play really, really good defense on them, it doesn't take that much drive practice. And all you have to do is stay between them and the goal. Crash into them, push them to the side, everything you can to stay between them and the goal. And that's your best shot at beating a team who might have a better robot than you. Now, if you're thinking, hey, this sounds really cool, but I'm not quite sure I caught all that. I'm not quite sure I understood everything you meant. Uh, go ahead and click the link in the description. I have a PDF explaining everything. So go ahead and click that link in the description for more details on that. Now, the last point I want to make is double parking. Don't do it. Double parking takes both robots out of commission for the last bit of the match, and those last few seconds are the most critical part of the match. Um, and it's often more points to do a quick D-score on uh, a, the low goal or the long goals or something like that uh, than it would be to double park. And so if the other team goes to double park, what you should do is D-score. Um, there will probably be an opportunity for you to D-score or at least score some points um, and then slide them through and D-score then. Uh, double parking takes quite a few seconds to do it reliably, so make sure you take full advantage if the other team goes for that. So that's all you need to know if you're kind of a newer team, first year, second year team looking to get started in VEX pushback for strategy. Uh, don't forget that PDF, uh, all, of, all of this laid out is uh, in the link in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any questions in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.